What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, you're dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're engaged, and we like to spread the good word together. <laughs> oh, yeah. And get scared together. <laughs> Well, yeah, we're doing my my silly idea I came up with last week, and I'm very happy that people seem to be into it. Yeah. Do people like the game? I hope people like the games that I torture James with. I like them because it means zero prep for me. Yeah. I just sit down and go on the ride that you've built for me. That's true. It is kind of the least amount of work that you have to do for any kind of episode it really we, is all so, i have to do is sit here and, and play so yeah this week we are going to read some christian horror movie reviews and i tried to find pretty evangelical christian movie review websites and by the way this is not we're not making fun of you listening if you're christian there's i'm sure there's many of you listening that are um and in fact i even when i was researching for this episode reading these reviews and and going through these sites just made me just made me realize that we need people to be offended by horror movies <laughs> if no one's offended by horror movies it's kind of not as fun <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Part of the fun of horror is that people get concerned that it's destroying the moral fabric of the nation. And that's that's part of the fun and enjoyment of being a horror fan <laughs> for me. Yeah, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Mm-hmm. Would be in the waste bin of history without those protests. Oh, man, exactly. I And I, I think that's such a cool part of that movie, too, is mm-hmm. the protests by parents that Santa Claus should not be portrayed in a movie murdering people. <laughs> <laughs> also, I realized when I was looking up these reviews, I found out that a a screenwriter and now director, he, he made his directorial debut, is a very devout Christian currently working, and I, I did not know that. A, a horror filmmaker? Horror director, yeah, uh, Gary Dauberman, who co-wrote both It movies. That's right, yeah. I think, did he go the second one solo? He might have writ- it, written the second one. Uh, I'm not sure. But I don't know if Muschietti co-wrote them with him yeah but yeah. he he is all up in the the controverse too uh he i know he wrote annabelle i think annabelle creation okay um let me i'm actually gonna gonna double check here which one's that's good. that middle one right that's yes the one that's, that it's good everyone like, it's, says it's the best one. Oh, he wrote on swamp thing too it looks like that was unfortunately kind of kneecapped pretty early the one with uh, Derek Mears. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he. Okay. So he wrote. Uh, he wrote Annabelle. Annabelle creation. It. He wrote both the first two Annabelles. Yes. Isn't that weird? They seem like they're written by d- completely different writers. Yeah. It's So bizarre. He wrote. Yeah. It. The nun. And the. Uh, let's see. He did. He wrote and directed Annabelle comes home. Annabelle comes home was his directorial debut. I love that movie. I had a fun time it's watching it. <laughs> so much fun. And it looks like he is involved in a TBA Salem's Lot something Ooh, that's listed on here. So interesting. Yeah, I think he's he's fantastically talented. I just thought it was interesting. I I, fo- I literally found an interview with him from gospelherald.com. Like he is a religious man and i actually kind of want to read some some quotes from him about his relationship with being devoutly christian and how he uses that in his writing process and yeah i mean with with those movies under his belt you could say he is one of the most successful modern day horror screenwriters oh yeah those are huge movies yeah those are like movies that kind of uh kind of escape the horror genre like bubble that we're often in and they're like mainstream big blockbuster movies. And it's kind of interesting that this kind of series, The Conjuring Universe, it does, a big part of it is the fact that the Warrens are deeply Christian. Yeah. In real life, they were very, very Christian. I Mm. believe Catholic. Yeah, they also suck. In real life. Yeah. But in the movies, they're some of my favorite 
I know. Movie characters I've just been ever. reading more about how, like, they suck. And is it kind of bad to have movies where they're portrayed as uh, lovable Patrick Wilson? For and me, they're just so completely separate. Yeah. To me, they're like Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter versus actual. <laughs> a- Do you know what I mean? Sure, they're just sure. so, they're so separate in my mm-hmm. head. And anyway, so this is an interview with him from gospelherald.com. Uh, he, when he was promoting Annabelle Creation, he, he admits he's always been fascinated by the works of Stephen King and Edgar Allan Poe and the supernatural in particular. But as a Christian, he said his faith gives him a unique perspective on the horror films, he writes. In many ways, these are faith-based films for me, he said. I'm a believer, so I believe evil and demonic entities are out there, but so is God and so is good. Even as dark and scary as these movies can get, there's always that safety net. If evil is true, the opposite must also be true. And then it goes on to say, he says, these things are real. There is magic out in the world, whether it's dark or good, Dauberman said. You can't deny that there's something higher out there. There's a higher power and there's a darker power. I think if people come away from my films thinking there is this energy out there or someone greater than us out there and we need to hold on to our faith, I'd be happy with that. Then he adds, when I write films, it all stems from what the characters believe and how that can, that informs their actions going through the story. In a sort of weird way, it's like, okay, what can I scare them with if this is what they believe? I think that's a really neat writing tool to use, especially for a writer who is a, a true believer and really does have, have a, a strong faith in something being out there and this concept of this universal good and evil that that really comes through in his characters because that really is like what the the conjuring series is it's very much good versus evil and i think it's neat that those characters and those stories are being written from the perspective of someone who probably is at at their core scared of that stuff Mm -hmm. and and does believe it is real i think that that's a cool thing to get is to have those stories written by someone who for them this is you know there's there's more to it than i'm just writing a movie that's scary it's like these are deep concepts that really frighten me on a supernatural level i i enjoy that a lot so all this to say i i you know we're not making fun of broadly you know i just don't want anyone to feel like we're being mean yeah and also i'll say that the sites i grabbed these from and that i'm going to read and we're gonna have kind of a some jokes and japes with like focus on the family can go fuck themselves <laughs> i don't i don't have an issue saying that there i plan to make fun of them and not be sorry and same with like this other i think it's christiananswers.net what i gathered from them is they are also very deeply evangelical in a way that I find very hateful and is it like anti homosexuals? Yes. And, yeah. It's yeah, so that um all that can go fuck itself. I yeah. don't have any respect for that. So I also want to clarify that <laughs> before we move in. All right, here's our first movie. This is from Christiananswers.net. And Christiananswers.net does the amazing job of giving a moral rating. Ooh. This one is extremely offensive, by the way. Oh, is, that, a, is that the scale from extremely from, offensive to... I think it goes from great to extremely offensive. Okay. I think everything on here is either offensive, very offensive, or extremely offensive. Extreme! Extremely offensive. And they also, which I find ex- extremely funny (laughs) they give a movie making quality rating so that is which i honestly think more review sites should do i think this is a good idea like you should have a if you're writing a movie review i love the idea of having like your personal enjoyment of it on a scale of one to five stars and then the quality of the movie itself removed from any feelings you have about it sure this is legitimately movie so it'll be like Extremely offensive, four and a half out of five stars. <laughs> so this movie making quality though is one point five stars out of five. Oh boy! So okay, here, here okay. we go. The summer of blank the year has been overall a terrible disappointment, but nothing this summer compares to the black hole of moral integrity and basic intelligence that is blank. Title of movie. If all goes well in Washington, the people who marketed this film will be brought up on charges and fined heavily. This film was marketed towards younger kids, and seeing the previews, one could have easily assumed it was fun for all ages. But this film ends up being a filth fest from the word go. 
I want to make a note that I am not a stingy guy. I loved Dogma. I laughed until I cried in Clerks, and Magnolia is my favorite film of all time. But some parts of this movie were so offensive that I literally closed my eyes for extended periods of time. But if you are the kind of person who thinks that no amount of rancid material could dissuade you from seeing a funny movie, let me take a different approach. This movie is simply not funny. You would have more fun if you spent 85 minutes thinking of clever adjectives to describe your feet. And on to the offensive material. A, few, a mere three years ago, this film would have been NC-17. It is raunchy, filthy, and completely disgusting. I worked at a theater this summer, and even the non-Christians I worked with, though they were far from the most stellar moral examples I've ever met, wow. were telling parents in the most blunt language possible, do not take your child to see this movie. It has no redeeming moral wor worldview or theme, and you can't go 15 minutes without seeing some kind of totally unnecessary sexual or Oregon. If there's any way possible to avoid this film, do it. Man, do up it. until the end, I was going to guess Yoga Hoosier, Hoosiers or whatever. Is that a horror movie? I think so, isn't it? I don't think... Is that a is horror movie? Is it not? Movie? No, I think... I'm thinking it... of Final Girls? Does that have one of those? I Okay, maybe I'm way off. You're, all, you're pretty off, yeah. Okay, because he mentioned, because I was like, is it Tusk? Because he's mentioning these Kevin Smith movies. No, I did almost use Tusk for one of these, though, but the review was just too specific. Like, <laughs> you, there, you can't talk about that movie without being like uh, this walrus-shaped man. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not possible. Okay, so I think it's a horror comedy. Because yes. they're talking about Correct. it not being funny. It's a horror comedy with a lot of uh, sex in it. Um, is it? It's a movie I know. Oh yeah. I feel like is it scary movie? It's scary okay, movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the dead giveaway that it's scary movie is this guy's references for a hey, I'm not, I'm not offended by everything. Is Dogma, Clerks, and Magnolia. Which yeah. is what Magnolia? <laughs> no, that's what. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I'm, I'm. I love raunchy stuff. I like this Kevin Smith movie, that Kevin and this Smith movie. Four hour <laughs> long art film. Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> he, well it says he it's his favorite film of all time. Magnolia? But, yeah. Well yeah, it's got the frogs raining. It's yeah, biblical. It does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, so that was a scary movie. <laughs> Again, rate, moral rating, extremely offensive, movie-making quality, 1.5 stars out of 5. I'll agree with both of those things. Okay, here we go. This, this is from the same website, not necessarily the same author. Mm -hmm. I forgot to write down the actual authors of these. I'll, I'll be cool and put them in the description. We'll credit okay. them. Um, there is one person that I genuinely... I want to know them in real life because I have so many questions. <laughs> and I'll say we're both fans, big fans of a, a movie that they reviewed. This next one, moral rating, extremely offensive. Movie making quality, also 1.5 stars out of five. Scary movie too. Here we go. Oh, and this, this so it, they don't do it for every review, but this one has a list of the amount of swear words and what they are, and it's great. Ooh. So we'll get to read those later. Okay, cool. Here we go. All right. Unless they're slurs. <laughs> <laughs> Movie, blank title, marks a new low for major releases. Those who've read my other Spotlight reviews, Spotlight is their movie section okay. uh no i have a high tolerance for offensive material <laughs> magnolia is my favorite i don't think it's the same guy uh and i try to give credit for artistic merit wherever possible but i've walked out of a few films that i considered both offensive and pointless and except for my intending to review it this one certainly would have qualified Content warnings, there's not much of a plot to give away, although a twist at the end might tempt some people to see the film a second time to unravel what they thought they'd seen. My purpose here is to persuade others not to see this film a first time, so be prepared for enough detail to satisfy any curiosity you may have. Profanity is extreme and there are many anti-female remarks and some racist ones. I saw this on a Saturday night and got to witness audience reaction. If all of the above weren't bad enough, several scenes were played for laughs and did get laughs. And here's our list of, um, I, by, I had to edit out where a lot of this would just, you would know. Identifiable what it is. information, yeah. Here we go, profane language. 
uh, we use Jesus's name in vain four times. We say G's. G's counts as profane language. Wow. Was that like his nickname? Like, yo, G's. Yo, G's. <laughs> yo, G's. We got a seat for you at this long table, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we saved you the middle spot, buddy. <laughs> Christ is used once. Goddamn is used twice. God is used 11 times. Hell is used once. Vulgar slash crude language. We have 28 plus F words. Dick four times. Blowjob once. Another reference to oral sex, just generally, I guess. Uh, SH words, I'm guessing is shit three times. Asshole once. Ass five. Bitch one. Bastard one. Bimbo slutty. Chicks and the bad F word. That is a slur. Chicks is on there? Chicks is on there uh, once, apparently. Chicks is... Wow. Chicks. Okay. You fucking chicks. Yeah. Um, okay. I feel like the biggest give mm -hmm. is the twist ending. Mm -hmm. But I don't think Sixth Sense was really vulgar. No, the <laughs> idea of the word bimbo being anywhere in that movie yeah. and slutty and chicks is very funny to me. And then, so after I ruled out Sixth Sense, I was like, well, saw. Also the fact that there's many anti-female remarks yeah. and some racist ones. Like we all just forgot Bruce Willis's <laughs> character and that's super racist or something. Well, that was the thing. Next I went to Saw, but I was like, I don't think that has those no. aspects of it you know for all of his his negative qualities i don't <laughs> think saw. john kramer doesn't see color right <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> okay so i'm really focused on this twist ending mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. uh it doesn't sound like it's a it's a well no it did say there were some scenes played for laughs mm -hmm. and got laughs mm -hmm. hmm. i'll tell you this movie's very funny to me is it scream no Okay. I w okay, so think twist ending. Um, think a little broader, I think, because I think often, like, there, it is kind of a, a twist ending, but I wouldn't say it's like a M. Night Shyamalan. Okay. A twist. Yeah. It's just, it, it's interesting. Okay. Funny? Yes. For me, very funny. A plus, very funny. Is it a movie, movie we've watched together? Who I don't know if we've watched this to get, we pro we probably have but it would have been pre dead meat yes wow yeah hmm barely remember a time we have not covered this movie in any capacity no <sighs> there's a reason <sighs> mm hmm what there's a reason I'll say it's my fault. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, how recent is this movie? The same year, I think, as Scary Movie. So like 2000? Yes. 2000. So that guy could have written this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. 2000 feels like a blind spot. I will also say this movie absolutely owns. I love this movie. It what? is in my top movies of all time. And it's a horror movie? Yes. That we haven't covered in no. any way. And it's your fault I somehow. would very much like to cover it, and I'm going to. Oh, there it is. Yeah. It's American Psycho. American Psycho. <laughs> oh, but they redid that one low on the filmmaking. Yeah, which is horseshit. <laughs> a lot of people don't like that movie because I think they miss the point. Oh, yeah. It's... Mm -hmm. I, I wish it's a weird one. It is a it's it's kind of neat that that movie finally I think has more broadly at least on film Twitter or just Twitter. I, I hate that now. I just but we can't go outside. So for me, Twitter is just what people are saying about mm. stuff. I feel like finally that movie is culturally at a point where people get it. You know, because for a while I do remember having seen a lot of people say that it is a deeply sexist movie or it's hateful or it's and often those people don't realize it was adapted and directed by a woman. And yeah, it was co-adapted by another woman with Mary Heron. So mm -hmm. it's for me a movie that I find very um, as, a, as a female like filmmaker, like a, a woman who went to film school and uh, like the fact that that movie was directed by a woman is very cool to me. And I will, it, all, it has such a special place in my heart. I'm worried about 
just jumping in and doing a kill count and then having everyone be pissed at me. Because if you listen to the podcast, you know me and think I'm cool, hopefully. <laughs> but like sometimes, sometimes my 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 presence leaks out to the broader channel and people are get upset about it. <laughs> so, but anyway, I'm going to need you soon because I'm uh, the next one I got to shoot is freaky and I'm going to need you for the to the numbers bit. Oh yeah, yeah that's we'll probably do, do the numbers themselves. Oh, that's fun. I have basically her exact jacket too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, great. yeah, I'm gonna. I really do. I, I'll say I'm gonna try and make it happen this year. American Psycho. Hey, I want to talk to you about our sponsor this week, Raycon Wireless Earbuds. I absolutely love these things. I'm not even just saying that because they're our sponsor this week. I have a pair and I have them in for hours on end every day and they last forever. They last about six hours with a full charge. I've been able to burn through so many audiobooks this way. I catch up on podcasts, music. I will say the bass in them is really, really good. I'm actually really impressed for a pair of wireless headphones. This isn't even in the copy, I'm just saying it. Right now, Raycon's offering 15% off all their products for our listeners, and here's what you have to do. Go to buyraycon.com slash deadmeatpod. That's B-U-Y Raycon, R-A-Y-C-O-N.com slash deadmeatpod. And that's it, you'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. So that is 15% off at buyraycon.com slash deadmeatpod. Here's our next movie also from christiananswers.net. I'm obsessed with this review. I want to talk to this author and I just, I just want to get in their brain a little bit because I kind of, I'm like kind of, I'm kind of there with them. Okay. And here we go. Moral rating. This is what's so funny about this to me too. Moral rating. It is offensive. It's an offensive movie. Just offensive. Yeah, it's not very or extremely, but okay. just offensive. Okay. Just a little, just a little, just a little like, you know, yeah. a little garnish. Like, you know, you go to confession, you're all good from watching it. Okay, so we got moral rating, <laughs> offensive, movie making quality, four stars out of five. All right. It's a good fucking movie. Okay. <laughs> Over the past several years, I have volunteered for Christian Spotlight. I have had the opportunity to review multiple horror films. The Uninvited, Dark Skies, Insidious, Chapter 2, and 3, etc. Looking back at these reviews, I have analyzed and come to understand what I am looking for as a horror movie critic in order for it to be considered worthy of a recommendation. Elements such as a strong plot, a good moments of scare to moments of calm ratio, strong performances, and a strong ending. For this movie, I can say without a doubt that this movie perfectly qualifies under all the mentioned criteria. So this is an apex horror movie. Wow. Like, oh, yeah. Let me be very straightforward about what this movie is not. It's not a slasher or a gore film like The Hills Have Eyes or Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, okay. Okay, that's a whole, I know, yeah, we're not yeah, having yeah, that yeah, debate. Yeah. <laughs> If this is what you're hoping for, you will not find it in this movie. And to be quite honest, this movie was not written for that purpose. While this movie, in my opinion, certainly contains a much lighter presence of objectionable content than most horror films, there is still some content that I must mention. Please do. Gotta do their job. <laughs> Violence, moderate to heavy. As I have said, most of the movie is built on a roller coaster of suspense and scares. Moments of terror include a scene, and this is where we'll see if you remember this movie, because we have watched it, and we have watched it for Dead Meat in some capacity. Here okay. we go. Moments of terror include a scene where a character sees a painting reach out to grab her. Other scenes of violence include a scene where a character is pushed, a choking scene, a scene where someone falls to the ground in an attic, a scene where one character is stabbed in the stomach and another character is stabbed in the throat and dies, and lastly, a scene where two characters are committing suicide. Profanity, moderate, vulgarity and profanity include the following, oh my god, six times, Jesus Christ once, God twice, oh god once, hell four times, bitch, bloody. It's funny, they flag the word bloody and they'll sometimes be like, for our uh, Christian British listeners, something to oh. look out for, which I think is hilarious. And SOB plus three S words. I know what it is. Shit. 
Oh, other. There is a brief moment where a young man jokingly tries to read palms, and another character is seen drinking wine on a few occasions. If you know what, I'm going to keep reading it just so if people are playing along and don't know, I'll give them the rest of this review because it's wonderful. And I might be wrong. I don't remember the last time I reviewed a horror film and gave it as high a commendation as I have with this movie. Two hours after leaving the theater, I am still amazed at how brilliantly written the film is and consequently how many critics have virtually disapproved of it. Does that confirm that you have it right? I, I think so. Okay, the film <laughs> provides a nice balance of suspense, horror, and psychological unease with a strong sense of pacing. As for a recommendation, even with the praise I have given it as a Christian, there is certain Certainly content to be aware of that may not be suitable. What do you think it is? I think the giveaway for me, mm -hmm. if I am right, was the two characters killing themselves. Mm -hmm. Is it the boy? Hell yeah, it is, dude. <laughs> Four the out of five fucking stars, baby. The boy is top tier. Yes, must recommend. Just Apex <laughs> horror filmmaking oh does it God. all right, baby. I am going to look up who reviewed this and we are going to talk because I love so much that they found so much. Yeah, they, they fucking love the boy. They're like, I mean, I've seen the insidious movies, but like the boy is where it's at. I'm so curious if this reviewer is was assigned to be a horror reviewer and isn't necessarily someone who was into horror before being a review because it yeah. sounds like they've seen a lot of newer because it, it's like we, I've I've had the opportunity to review. I mean, um, I haven't seen the Insidious sequel. Yeah, so it just seems in there. like I I bet they're seeing a lot of like newer, really random horror movies, mm. most of which aren't gonna be the best. And I wonder if the boy just was Blew better. Their minds, enough. they're like it was what? better enough. That twist. I. I could not get over this review. It made me so happy. I yeah, don't know. It, it was the two characters killing themselves. And then when you mentioned bloody as like, as a British uh -huh. swear, I was like, yeah, yeah, for We're, sure. Yeah, yeah, because they're, they're British. And they, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're British, except Lauren Cohen is playing That's American. Right. But she is. But she is British. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do think that, because I think often we focus just as, as fans and critics Especially on, I don't know why we're talking about Twitter so much. This episode. It's because it's the only fucking social interaction that we have right now. Mm -hmm. There's often this focus on name your like name your film hot take. Like what's a film you hate that everyone else loves? And mm -hmm. That's just like it just gets frustrating to because it just makes people piss at each other. I personally love hearing when someone deeply appreciates and loves a film that most other people think is trash and genuinely trash. Like not even in an ironic way, but they really appreciate the boy of all movies. And I don't know, I I, I just makes it just as nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a nice it's a nice a nice thing to read. And also Brams is our fucking boy. Are we still doing a commentary track on the boy? Whenever too? Beth's available. Okay, She's that's had happening. a busy work week. We did do a commentary on the boy, that's what we did it for. Yeah, for, with dead, it, meat. for dead Meat. And um, yeah, that movie is a fucking roller coaster. Okay, I think they even said that in the review. They did. All right, here is, so yeah, not wrong. Um, <laughs> So shout out to my fellow Brams stands. Uh, okay. Bram stands. And you you can all get together and get a Bram Stams tramp stamp. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, mine would be like, the, like it'd be the doll and then behind him is like peeking out of like maybe even my butt crack where it's like the actual <laughs> spoilers the actual guy who lives in the wall like the actual boy i am begging you please do not do that <laughs> <laughs> I, I always joke like if I if I whenever I do jokes that are about tattoos I'll be like if anyone does this take a picture of it don't, don't please don't, don't do that. please don't please don't have the boy going out of your fucking asshole for a tattoo oh my god okay here we oh, go man. our next okay. movie yeah. our next movie moral rating very offensive movie making quality four out of five stars all right. So as good as the boy, if you can <laughs> if believe you can it. believe it. Neither the plot nor the setting are the most important parts of the movie as concerns Christian parents. Rather, 
of concern is an alternate world in which the functioning domesticity of a mother who cooks and a father who works is a kind of hell. Hmm. It is the kind of home that atheists imagine Christians live in. <laughs> A Stepford family reality of a puppet people with no creativity or individuality. In every relationship in the movie, the female character abuses the male. To a non-Christian audience, she is supposed to seem confident, charmingly rebellious, and above all, equal to the adults. It is an atheistic view of family in which moral authority begins with the child, flows through the mother, and ends at the father. A conscious inversion of a Christian family model. Do you know what it is yet? Or no? No. Okay, interesting. What the female characters have in common are an abusive streak that is either slight or extensive, but which is present in all three. The horror of it comes not from the plot, which is common, but from its nihilistic attitude. This view sees human relations as a power struggle, which can only be resolved by an exercise of will, and it sees life as an existential wasteland that has no intrinsic meaning but what we can give to it ourselves. As art, it is a diminished thing without light, while its truest love is of the darkness in all things. What? Yeah. Wow. Do you want me to give you... I can point out some things in this review that might help I you I hear out. three female characters. I hear, I'm assuming, wife, and then there's a husband, and then there are, assuming, two daughters. Mm -hmm. Am I on the wrong track? Mm -hmm. Okay. Kind of. And then they're abusive? Is that their kind of reading of the situation, or would you also describe those characters as abusive? I will fully and i've seen this but i don't remember it super well i would say i don't again i don't really remember this movie okay i don't think the parents are abusive at least they're not it, it, it once you know what it is it's hard you'll you'll okay. see why i'm struggling a little bit here i can point out um let me read a sentence that i think will mm -hmm. will help you out here yeah because there's a lot in there oh yeah of them making a lot of accusations yeah, yeah, and yeah, assumptions yeah. here this is the first line of the review okay neither the plot nor the setting are the most important parts of the movie as concerns christian parents Rather of concern is an alternate world in which the functioning domesticity of a mother who cooks and a father who works is a kind of hell. Yeah. What does that mean? Why would Christian parents be concerned about a horror movie? Is it like The Omen? No. No, no, no. Oh, man. This, is, this review is, I'll, I'll say, is specifically written for parents who think they might take their children to this. This is a movie f made for children. Oh, is it uh, Coraline? Coraline, yes. Oh, wow. Yep, the, okay. the alternate world. in Because remember, the yeah. other mother is like, I, I think I remember she gets there and she's all like, oh, I make cookies. And she's like seemingly perfect. She's a Stepford wife. But that's mm -hmm. when you asked if they were like bad parents. I'm like. I don't remember. Yeah. I think they're just kind of miserable in the beginning. All I, rem I remember that movie is that, I mean, it's it's very, I liked it a lot. It looks cool as hell. And the, the dad in it is a Michigan State alum. That's like the. Fucking, that's right. Yeah. I always remember thinking that that movie would be best as a silent film because the I remember the dialogue mm. being really just like surface level and obvious and that everything could be portrayed silently that's interesting. and like a silent animation i don't know if that's been done before but that uh, could have been the cool snowman oh which is yeah, that trippy thing with the that he's flying on his back and like the yeah, cool perspective the animation snowman that i watched every year on christmas and i re i learned is like primarily a a uk thing mm. i just had it on tape as a kid and Man, I hadn't watched it in a, in a bit, and I watched it this year for Christmas, and I had to, like, just quietly go somewhere and cry by myself. <laughs> Silent animation's great. Fantasia, we got, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's plenty of that. But, uh, yeah, modern, full length. That could have been cool. I remember when Wally -E came out, people were like, your kids might struggle with the fact that no one talks for 20 minutes. <laughs> this next movie... I wrote this review is A plus and I have a lot of it, which is true. I have basically the entire review because this review, oh, it just sung to me. It's just it's 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 what I was looking for for okay. this game. It's beautiful. 
moral rating extremely offensive. It couldn't be anything but extremely yeah. offensive. <laughs> Movie making quality, three and a half stars. Okay. So it's fine. <laughs> By the way, this website, the boy made just as good as Coraline. <laughs> <laughs> the trailer gives an accurate foretaste. Though demons and occult are not plainly shown, there's no doubt that it involves possession. This movie is a story built on wicked foundations and may only be enjoyable to those who take pleasure in evil. That's us. That's what we do on the podcast. <laughs> in fact, I did not stay for the full two hours because my stomach was churning unpleasantly. This reviewer left. <laughs> wow. We never divulged the ending to our readers anyway, and the film is too shamefully sin-loving to earn my respect or desire, so I left as soon as I sensed that the last scenes were near. This was the only God-honoring thing to do, as watching would only do harm. That is an abdication of duty, my friend. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> There are times when it's worth losing a few dollars of ticket value to keep our eyes, quote, full of light, unquote, and stay spiritually healthy. Math like, Matthew 6, 22, 23. If this isn't a Rob Zombie movie, then I don't know what they're talking about. It's not a Rob Zombie Because, <laughs> like, the way they're describing it, I'm like, yeah, Devil's Rejects. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. So, while I cannot orgy like human centipede. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't find Human Centipede on any of these. They're no, like, no, they wouldn't no, do no, it. No, and they're, they're not just... going to review Human Centipede. Are you kidding? Wouldn't that be great, though? If someone can find a very Christian review of Human Centipede, please email it to me. Uh, so while I cannot claim to have seen the final few minutes, here are my observations about the rest. Simply put, nearly everything I can say about movie is negative. The violence is extreme, even against animals. It's not Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> the blood loss is extreme and potential for disturbing effects on children are extreme. Dozens of injuries and deaths occur either as quick shocks or slow torment. None are natural. Wicked intentions are frequent. There are dark and heavy themes relating to death, abandonment, shallow friendships, bullying, guilt, and anger, which may cause young people or those weak in their faith to feel sickened, depressed, and confused. Relief, solutions, and justice are sadly missing. Overall, it's nightmare material with little value. Furthermore, gifts of God such as unique personalities, parenting, friendship, sexuality, and life itself deserve to be given higher worth than this movie affords them. The corruption, pain, disconnection, and death of human beings is meant to be a matter of solemn grief for all people, not used as concentrated entertainment. That's every horror movie. Hello. Yeah. Like, this movie thinks death is cool to watch. Like, <laughs> yes, that is how this works. I'm sorry to say. Even if a killer is slain, it is never no big deal. God takes no pleasure in death, even the death of the wicked, Ezekiel 18, 31, 32, because they were his loved creations who grieved him. Another key concern for us is the use of child actors for about half the starring roles. This involves real kids using strong expletives and being taught to simulate criminal acts of violence, which they probably don't fully understand. Is Satan involved? In Building Dread, a few hints such as the number 13 appear. Witchcraft masks and animal skulls hang on blank walls, blanks character names walls and though it's very subtle at first the ultimate suggestion uh oh, oh, oh that's spoilery just kidding despite starting attractively after a short time the preoccupation with random and gleeful destruction takes off several characters even the hero are seen smiling laughing and enjoying a variety of horrible things they do to each other Revenge and vigilante justice are portrayed as reasonable responses to being harmed, even though human conscience tells us that vengeance is only doing farther harm and ought to be left to God. It is so sad that so little real love, happiness, or kindness occurs in this movie, and characters rarely smile. It descends into very evil and twisted content. Another telltale sign that the movie is descending into very evil and twisted content is that most of the action occurs at night. 
daylight almost seems to disappear into insignificance. This is an effect I frequently noticed in sin-led lives and has been backed up in scripture. They prefer to live at night. <laughs> yep. John 3, 19, 20, Ephesians 5, 8, 16, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 5, 7. Here's our list of swear words. Wait, there that was a quote? I've noticed people... Like to live. No, at and they're night? just saying. I know they're they're, they're just citing. They're the, just saying st numbers. They're saying what backs okay. it up. The they're citing their passage, yeah. They're okay. citing their sources. Yeah, <laughs> vulgar crew language, very heavy. Total of at least fifty eight curses, mostly spoken by teens. F words twenty plus. Motherfucker banged in re reference to sex. <laughs> Dick three times. Uh, parentheses male part. Chode, <laughs> bitch. Shit words, ass variants, Shit words. ass variants. That's the best. Yeah, ass variants. Oh, There's all man. varieties of ass and pissed. For a hot second, I was thinking it, but it's. I knew you would guess it, but it's not. It's not. Right. Man, there's kids. Mm hmm. There's a bunch of kids. Is it Zombie Land? No. Okay. Zombie Land. Huh, I'm confused because he was like, or the writer was like, people don't smile often, but I saw the hero smile doing bad stuff. Mm hmm. It's dark and it's two hours, although I don't fully trust their ability to accurately. No. And they also the left. Runtime. They also <laughs> left. <laughs> they fucking left. Oh, man. How I'm I'm what do you what are your just like I, what kind of movie are you imagining? I'm very curious. Maybe a whole no I was gonna say a horror comedy, but it said no one's smiling. Is it kind of a horror comedy? Yeah. I don't think it's 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 a horror comedy in the way that like scream. A lot of Yeah, where like it's funny, but it's I would never be like, this is a horror comedy comedy it's funny have we watched it together mm -hmm. yes <clears throat> for dead meat have we covered it yes we have not covered it you have that doesn't help a lot is it ice cream man no <laughs> dude that would be so sick if they went and saw ice cream man like recently enough to write an internet review of it, it like they went in to see it at like a midnight screening <laughs> yeah no it's not ice cream oh man. oh man it sounds like there are teenagers but that it's not all teenagers is it a mix of adults and teenagers yes i would say mostly the kids there is an adult in this that is like a well-known person like actor cast Mm -hmm. I'm using actor, gender neutral. Mm -hmm. So that's the only adult of note I can, although there, there's no, there's a handful, but that's like the name I would say first build in this, maybe. Man, I am sorry. I am really okay. blank in here. Isn't this, isn't this like such a wild review? Okay. Uh, it came out in 2019. This is oh, recent. super recent. Really recent, yeah. Oh, God, is it like Halloween? No. 2018? Oh, no. I guess it wouldn't be Halloween 2018 if it came out in 2019. Nope, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that this movie, I think, is is pretty popular among te like y a younger horror audience, I think. I don't know what kids like. It's not like Truth or Dare. No, I don't know. This movie, um, generally pretty good, pretty good reviews. Not the best. I'm sure there are so many listeners right now screaming at me. I don't know. I mean, this is this is a tough one. The villain in this. Yeah. Big name. Big, big, big name. Bigger than the the other the adult I had mentioned, who's like a name. If <laughs> the adult character mm -hmm. is not first build, or if they are first build, this movie is and featuring okay. blank as as the villain. Uh huh. And this was kind of a crazy like. This was a big a big announcement, big casting announcement. 
And I've covered it. <laughs> it's not like color out of space, is it? No, not color okay. out of space. Okay. Damn, I thought I had it at first from your reaction. The actor that was a huge casting announcement, don't ever see them. Oh, we don't ever see them on screen. Mm -mm. So they're like a voice? Mm hmm. They're a voice, and it's a huge name, and. It's not Ted. Uh, <laughs> Dear to this was Ted. I mean, you're not on the wrong track with Ted. Oh my goodness, it's Child's Play. Child's Play 2019. Of course. The, man, this reviewer like it, thinks that Child's Play 2019 is the most wicked movie they've ever seen. They wow. left. Okay, all the hints, yeah, they're falling into place now. Whoops. Yeah. Aubrey Plaza is the, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Yeah. It was hard to give hints for this one. Even That's I, tough. I was going to maybe say it was a remake, but I, that might have. Also, my, I, I did, oops, I omitted one last part of this review. Uh, a group of teen boys teach Chunky to stab a victim's chest and say, this is for two fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Which is my favorite part of that movie. Whose walls had skulls and shit? Apparently in Andy's room. That threw me off. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like like Leatherface's room. Yeah, or just like a like a a, a Wiccan type thing, you know? Yeah. Okay. The uh, this one is from Focus on the Family's website. So, and this kind of the reviews are formatted a bit differently. So here we go. Spiritual elements of blank movie when villain is summoned his appearance is preceded by the ringing of what sounds like really terrible church bells we see several s shots of churches in the background too one of which is fronted with a sign that says god is listening to your prayer and one of the characters has for some reason a light up virgin mary statue uh there's some references to occult activity we hear one f word and one more mild stand in for that word i'm guessing like Frick or something. Fudge. Fudge. Only he didn't say fudge. <laughs> Along with about half a dozen shit words also <laughs> uttered, but not by the villain who apparently has an aversion to profanity. Bitch. Uh, what is? Oh, damn. And hell. I love shit words. I know it because it, it's it says s words, but I like just calling them shit words. Oh, okay. <laughs> shit I love words. that. I just always forget. Damn is considered super offensive to where this has it. It's like D hyphen N. And I looked at it and was like, what, Dan? Like D Don? Like what? <laughs> God's name is misused twice while Jesus's name is abused. Once someone makes an obscene gesture, I'm guessing a middle finger. Uh, this movie is just a bad movie and bad in every possible way. It's like a sandwich made of peanut butter, mustard, and raw chicken, then soaked for an hour in Mountain Dew, grilled <laughs> on high for 40 minutes, and finally garnished with despair. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and so I kept, I put this review in, and I was like, wow, that's poetry, dude. I love it. There's not a content here by a contemporary horror movie standards, but enough to spoil it anyway. Horror movie fans won't like it because it's not all that scary. Anyone who likes like sensical, sensical, sensible storytelling won't <laughs> like it because, well, for obvious reasons. Really, the person that might like this movie the best might be the villain themselves. Not because it's about them, they seem like a modest chap, but because he has no eyes or ears. He alone could sit through the thing and not be bothered. So it is a he. I just wanted to use the word chap because it's. I thought it was funny. <laughs> So apparently, yeah, the only only person who would be able to deal with this movie is the villain because they wouldn't be able to see it or hear it. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. What villain doesn't have eyes or ears? Mm -hmm. That feels like a big giveaway. It's a pretty big giveaway. Is that Pan's Labyrinth? No. I guess he's got he some has eyes. eyes on his hands. His hands. I love, I just want to read that one part again. <laughs> It's a bad movie and bad in every possible way. It's like a sandwich made of peanut butter, mustard, and raw chicken, then soaked for an hour in Mountain Dew, grilled on high for 40 minutes, and finally garnished with despair. That's that's like a that's like a food that in a Connor O'Malley video he would be like, I'm making lunch for my my bros and all my cousins, and like just <laughs> <laughs> making this raw chicken Mountain Dew sandwich. What are we thinking? Ah, oh, man. We've done it for the podcast. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. 
We had some guests on. Some get. Oh boy, is it Slender Man? Is our voice <laughs> Slender Man featuring We Hate Movies? That episode is one of the funniest episodes we've ever done. <laughs> That's such a good one if you have not listened to it. Yep, Slender Man. Fucking Slender Man. Oh boy. All right, we'll do one, one last one. Okay. Because this is so good. Moral rating. We're back to ChristianAnswers.net. Good. They I, had the I best. Them. I'm, yeah. I know, right? I was missing them. I like their their rating system. Mm-hmm. Is it very offensive? Extremely. Extreme. Extreme. We're ending with extremely offensive. We Movie making to. quality, three out of five. All right. I still like my favorite part of these is when they're like extremely offensive. But, five stars. Yeah. It's, it's it a, looked they, great. That was pretty good. <laughs> I cannot stress enough that the portrayals of violence are the worst I have ever seen. Many are so unspeakably grotesque that it is difficult to imagine how someone could have conceived of them. Terrifier. No, not terrifier. (laughs) Although this next sentence, it could be. During one scene of repulsive imagery, there is also female nudity thrown in to make the perversion complete. But yeah, it's not terrifier. (laughs) Dude, terrifier is not going to be on any of these websites. (laughs) I... Someone needs to, I, I would love to see it, like an evangelical review site, but of like the most, fun, like, like, heinous, like, fucking... na- like, like spooky rice covers, like, yeah, like a Serbian yeah. film, but from an evangelical perspective. <laughs> Fuck, that'd be awesome. The rest of the film consists almost entirely of unbelievably horrible graphic depictions of torture, mutilation, cannibalism, dismemberment, etc. It's not Saw. Uh, it's not of the Saws? No, that's too right. obvious. Yeah. The mediocre science fiction elements are not worth the defilement that comes from the rest of the film. I am ashamed that I saw this film and even more ashamed that I didn't get up and leave when these dreadful elements began. You know what, reviewer? You did your job and I commend it. You stayed <laughs> for the whole thing. Christians are commanded to be, quote unquote, innocent in what is evil, Romans 16, 19. I would highly caution you if you are seeing this movie. What are we thinking? All I've gotten from it is that it's super gory and there's nudity. And apparently to this person, mediocre science fiction elements. Yeah, but it's not Invisible Man. No. I'm assuming it's older than that brand new movie. Yes, this is a not- new movie we'll okay science fiction is it like event horizon it is event yeah! horizon yes when is there is there nudity in i that? don't i we watched remember. that once and i was just there's kinda, a lot happening yeah. in that movie and i don't remember i you know what no i feel like i know because doesn't he see he's I've, he's like i don't remember they're tripping a lot in there yeah they're tripping <laughs> balls that whole movie damn all right. Science, sci-fi got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I was just wanted to get it right off the bat. It's not Saw. Because <laughs> I know people are probably sitting there like, it's Saw. It's just Saw. Yeah, good job not choosing Saw I tried to pick obvious. ones that wouldn't be obviously mm-hmm. really offensive movies. I would love to see if Jennifer's body's on any of those websites. See what probably. they have to say about that. Probably. Probably. There were some that I there uh, I I had a whole list of reviews that I didn't I couldn't get to all of them. I actually read a really interesting review. I think it was actually on the Focus on the Family website where the reviewer really enjoyed the Babadook. Oh. Um and and it was actually I thought a very thoughtful review about um death and and grief and how that movie it, yeah, I was, I was, I was like, I can't. I, I had it on my list of possibilities. But I was like, this is, isn't interesting enough for this because mm-hmm. it's like just, it's just a kind of good movie review of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Cool. Well, that, that was fun. That was that was a lot of fun. I I enjoyed that quite a bit. Thank you for humoring me and letting me. Yeah, that me... child's play one messed me up. Oh man, that they that movie is sinful as shit. I know they really didn't like it. Yeah, any any horror movie that has child actors in it, these websites just can cannot. Oh, yeah. They simply cannot accept the Babadook because the Babadook is good, even though even their reviewer is like, "Fuck that kid." <laughs> <laughs> even <laughs> the Bible tells us to be accepting of all people, but fuck that kid. <laughs> fuck kids ezekiel 7 13 yeah no uh all right so next 
week, we are going to review his house. Yeah. I had that on my Twitter poll like a minute ago where eventually um, I'm thinking of ending things one. Oh, yeah. But I had... I still really wanted to watch his house and we're covering it. And yeah, I really liked that movie. Very good movie. It's a good one. It scared me. It, it had a few scares. There's some There's some solid scares in it. And featuring Javier Botet, who we're big fans of. Mm -hmm. He is tall and scary and a very good actor. I always enjoy seeing him and stuff, even though um, I'm always fucking terrified when he shows up. So... Cool. Yeah, so check it out. Uh, I forget where... Oh, it's on Netflix, isn't it? Is that where we watched it? Mm, yes, I think so. I think so, so. yeah. Yeah, because then we got mad that it cut off the credits. Yeah, because I just wanted to like sit with it for a minute, and right. then I was like, now watch this! I'm like, I get it with a TV show, Netflix, yeah. but like with the movie, let me watch the credits. But we'll be looking at that. It'll be good stuff. Chelsea's going to do some uh, all-star research, like always, mm -hmm. to... to school me on some stuff I just yeah well we were gonna like just record two podcasts in a row because we we watched his house a couple nights ago but after watching it i was like mm. <laughs> i don't want to review this movie and not be able to talk about yeah sudan like if it were lake mungo we could have done a double hitter but this sure. one needs some historical background i think yeah. the politics behind what leads to the movie are really important you don't necessarily need to know that to watch and enjoy this movie mm -hmm. but even in my very basic research already it's made analyzing that movie a lot more just rich like there's it's so dense i mean and that's why people listen to and watch the podcast is because i mean so many people were like me when it came to i'm thinking of ending things where they watched it and didn't really know how, what to make of it and then listened to the podcast and well, that knew how to appreciate it. Yeah. I also got a lot of really lovely emails in response to that episode. And oh, I, I haven't been able to reply to all of them, but I, I really appreciate them. And yeah, we're hanging there. We're all in this fucking weird shit together. And yeah, appreciate you guys. <laughs> so... Yes, in the meantime, you can follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm at Carebeck, C-A-R-E-B-E-C-C -E -E on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Cool. See you next week. I'm James. <laughs> Chelsea. This has been the Dead Meat Podcast. <laughs>